Hello everyone. As you know that uh, we have been studying about the topic grouting procedures. So already we have completed the uh, the some parts of the grouting procedures. That is grouting procedure part one, which consists of pre-grouting site investigation, grouting hole pattern, grout characteristics grouting plant and equipment. So these four topics we have already covered in uh, grouting procedures. That is the part one, right? So today we shall talk about the remaining part as a part two, right? Grouting procedures part two. So in this part, we shall talk about the injection methods, hip, and another is the monitoring and measurement of the ground. That is the sixth point we shall also discuss. So we can see in case of injection methods, as I told you, the grouting procedure part two consists of injection methods. Under injection methods, many injection procedures are there. Grouting from bottom, grouting from top, circuit grouting, two-way manchet grouting, that is also called as time grouting, point grouting, jet grouting, pressure injected line, electrokinetic injection, compaction grouting, and then the sixth one is the grout injection measurements and monitoring. So we can see that under the heading part one, grout procedures, the four components we have completed, we have already studied. So today we shall talk about the remaining two topics, that is the fifth injection methods and the sixth is the grout in injection measurements and monitoring. So one by one we shall talk. Under the heading injection method, the, you can see nine topics are there. All the nine topics we shall cover today including grout injection measurements and monitoring. So grouting from bot bottom, that means what we have to do. Grouting from bottom, in this case, a grout hole of 50 to 75 millimeter dia is drilled to a full plant length. From bottom means we have, a st as we have to a start grouting from the bottom, right? That means from bottom to upward, bottom to top, right? From bottom to top, you can see. This is the grouting from bottom. So that's why it is the a hole of this diameter, 50 to 75 mm diameter, is drilled up to the full plant depth. Up to the final depth, we have to make a hole. Then we have to start grouting from the bottom. And we shall proceed till the ground level. You can see in rigid soil or intact rock strata, a self-expanding packer is placed directly above the lowest zone and grout is pumped in. You can see here, this is the bottom part. Here the packer has been, self-expanding packer has been placed. So what benefit is there? They, once grouting is going to be carried out, the grout will not go in upward direction. And it will be fully utilized. That means the grout will be injected in the in this area. You can see how this area has been grouted, right? Next, you can see this procedure is repeated after the packer is raised and the fixed to the next. Zone. You can see the first, the bottom part. This part has been grouted. Again, the it it will go in upward directions. And the next part is again next part is grouted, and another part is grouted. Likewise, from bottom to top, the grouting will be completed. And the packer is that's why it is written here. Packer is raised and fixed in the next zone. Thus, the drill hole is grouted successfully upwards in upward directions. So this is from grouting from bottom to top. Now the next we can see top to bottom, grouting from top to bottom. 
In this method, holes are drilled down to the seam closest to the surface and grouting is carried out. You can see the closest to the surface, near, that means nearby the ground surface, a hole is made and then the grouting is completed surrounding this hole, right? We have to proceed for the grouting from top to bottom, right? A step wise or a stage wise, we have to follow, we have to complete this work. So, again, holes are then cleaned and washing and drilling continue to the next scene. So, what once what we every time we have to wash the holes and then further grouting we have to do in downward direction. So, next zone, the first zone we have to cover. Once first zone is completed, then we have to make a drill hole further towards the bottom. That is that is the second stage. Okay. Actually, this is going to be carried out without packer, right? No packer is used. You can see this zone has been grouted. This grouting process is implemented. Subsequent washing followed further drilling and repeated grouting are done until the entire operation is complete. You see, whenever you are going to proceed for the next grouting, you have to make a hole in downward direction. First is, after first stage is second stage, third stage, fourth stage, till the grouting is completed. But every time we have to wash the holes, then we have to begin the grouting. So it is without down stage, without packer. That means top to bottom. So this is this is the with packer you can see figure b indicates grouting is facilitated in a particular zone by fixing packers this is also from the top to bottom but packer is used right packer is nothing but is a sealing materials it helps in using the full grout right or the complete grout in the process of grouting right so this packer is a sealing materials it is going to help in the ground now we can see the next topic under the heading injection method circuit grouting in this grouting what normally it is done this method is based on the principle of grouting from top downwards from the top to downwards a drill hole is bored to the depth of the bottom zone, right? And the grout is pumped down, pumped down the, the, through grout pipe with sufficient volume and pressures. The excess grout being returned to the pumping plant for recirculation. You can see this figure. This is the first strata, second strata, third strata. This is the grout injection pump or grout, grout pipeline you can see. So what is going, the grout is going to be uh, sent through this pipe in the grout hole, right? And uh, it, it is going to be started from the top downwards. So once grouting is completed, the remaining grouting material is going to be retired and further again it is recirculated, right? The grout hole is then deepened and the procedure is repeated. From top downwards means grouting from the top. So we have to start from the top and we have to achieve our grouting objective till the final, till the final grouting, right? But this work has to be carried out. Also, this, this work has also been to be carried out in stage Y, in step Y, from top to bottom. So what we understood here, the remaining grout is going to be, go, it is going to uh, be returned and again it, has, it will be recirculated. The grout hole is then deepened and the procedure is repeated. We can see the next uh, uh, injection method is the tube A manchet grouting. This is also called as TAM grouting, right? So what it says that the double packer method adopted for fissured rocks has been found unsuitable in alluvial subsoil as difficulties faced 
to effect a seal on the lower back. In case of alluvial soil, it is very difficult to seal the uh, at the lower portion or the at the lower packer, we can say. So this difficulty can be overcome by this much tab grounding. You can see this figure; it is completely clear. clear. One by one, we shall see what points are given here. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six. One. What is the one bore hole for injection? This is a bore hole, right? Slip grout. Here, clay cement grout uh, is filled in this uh, bore hole in this tam method. After that, the tube a manchet with injection holes. This is the third one. You can see. This is the tube. This is the tube. This is called a tube manchet. That is tam, right? In which the vertical holes or injection holes at vertical intervals of 300 millimeter has been made. You can see these are the holes. Here holes are also there. Here holes are also there. So in this uh, uh, tube, the uh, 300 millimeter interval at 300 millimeter interval in downward direction. The hole has been made. The fourth point, what he says that rubber sleeve manchet, sealing injection holes, except this uh, rubber seal. We shall. I will also explain here. So injection tube, this is injection tube, pistons or the packer is also given here. So let us see. In this method, a 12.5 to 15 centimeter hole is drilled in a stator. So if this is the whole uh, complete uh, hole diameter. We can say 12.5 to 50 centimeter hole. This is the point one we can see here. A six centimeter diameter pipe called the tam have injection holes at vertical intervals of about 300 millimeters. You can see the three point. So this is the six centimeter diameter. This point number three, six centimeter diameters having. The vertical injection holes, the holes are here, holes are here, here is at 300 millimeter interval. The so next time is lowered into the inside, the drill hole having sleeve grout, clay cement grout. These are the grout. Once hole is mazed, the cement clay grout, grout is filled in. Okay? And this time, once the grout is filled in, then it is it is put inside the hole, right? So time is lowered inside the drill hole having sleeve grout. Next, 10 centimeter wide tightly fitting rubber slips for sealing injection holes. You can see the 10 cm wide. These are the rubber slips. 0.4 here. 0.4 rubber slips are there. What is the function of the rubber slips? I will tell you. It has been sealing the injection holes. We can see when the grout is pumped in through the inner pipe due to high pressure, the clay cement grout cracks and allows the grout to fill the voids of surrounding soil through rubber slip. You can see these are the the one is the drill hole. Okay. Inside the drill holes, clay cement grout is filled in. In this uh, uh, grout, uh, this uh, tam tube has been lowered. That the diameter is six centimeter. Okay. So what is happening in inside the tam? A grout pump or a, a, this injection a pipe tube is placed in injection tube. The pipe number fifth. So through the injection tube. When the grout is sent through the pressure, what happens? It moves through the rubber sleeves, right? The rubber sleeves is open, okay? And the clay cement grout, which has already filled in the hole, is going to be going to crack and allow the grout materials to pass inside the soil, alluvial soil, for the grouting. So once grouting is uh, completed, then the, this rubber sleeve is going to be closed. Okay, so further uh, suppose the uh, grout pump is not working. 
so uh, this will be uh, this rubber sleeve will sleep the this rubber sleeve will this uh, close the knee injection holes right rubber sleeve prevents grout it is also written here the rubber sleeves prevents grout from flowing back into the tube once pumping has stopped it will not it will not allow the this uh, cement clay grout to go inside this uh, the tank right the tube way match it in this tube it will uh, it will not go okay or pumping has just stopped so what is going to happen this clay cement grouse which has been already been placed inside the holes is going to solve the prop some problems the first problem supporting the hole because it is alluvial soil the soil will not come out in the hole right so it is also going to provide the support for the soil and second allowing allowing grout to flow into the soil right and uh, it also this uh, it also allow uh, to flow the grout which is coming through this tube inside the soil holes this method is suitable for grouting alluvial type soil right it is difficult to assess the pressure intake and is costlier than the other methods right grouting pressure is very difficult to measure in this case uh, and it is also costly we shall see the next method point grouting in case of point grouting what uh, we do in shallow uh, in shallow work of 10 to 12 meter d the grout is injected from a long pointed rod okay injections are delivered at predetermined positions that means where we have to uh, do the grouting work along the line of the drive and then a second reacting grout in the ingredient is to be placed independently to the initial injection that is also called a two soft method that means first we have to send the grout right what one, one type one uh, at the predetermined positions and uh, after that the second grout also we can inject so that's why we, uh, the two sort method also we can say this is widely used but has limitation as regard to depth and penetrability of the fine starter so depth and the penetrability constants are also there in the use of the point grout so next injection method we can see the jet grouting jet grouting is also called as replacement method okay jet grouting is a replacement technique in which soil ranging from seal to clay and weak rocks can be treated this method consists of lowering a drill pipe into a 150 mm diameter bore hole this you can see the figure 150 mm diameter bore hole is there okay uh, in this hole drill pipe is going to be lowered the drill pipe is specially designed which simultaneously conveys so this drill pipe you can see this drill pipe which has been kept inside the bore hole having 150 mm dia so what benefit is there what facilities the drill pipe has the drill pipe is specially designed which simultaneously conveys three things the first one is pumped water second is compressed air and third is the grout fluid okay at the bottom of at the bottom end of the two nozzles are uh, at, are provided at 500 ml apart that means you can see at the bottom two nozzles are there one nozzle is here this is called a upper jet here one nozzle is there and the lower jet nozzle is also there and this has been made at 500 mm apart here 0.5 meter or 500 mm apart two nozzles are there okay so next we can see the upper nozzle this upper nozzle having dia of the 1.8 mm delivers water at about 400 bar pressure right surrounded by a color of compressed air at 7 bar to produce a cutting jet so two things are here water and compressed air are going to going to pass through this uh, to this opening through this opening okay 
or this nozzle and the grout is delivered through the lower nozzle which is a 7 mm diameter at 40 bar. The grout is from here, grout is del uh, uh, de delivered and here the upper jet water and compressed air is mixed, right? And you can see in case of jet grouting, always this uh, grout pipe is in rotation, okay? Always in rotation. The grouting action requires the stem to be slowly raised. That means this uh, rotation is also going to be carried out. So parallelly, all the three things, three works are going on: water and compressed air and grouting, and uh, it is also going to be raised in upward direction, right? And that's why it is written here. The grouting action requires the stem to be slowly raised, whereby the excavated material produced from the jetting action is replaced by grout in most the surface. You see that this is called as the jet grouting is also called as replacement grouting. That means by jet and water pressure, water and compressed air is going to cut this wire. Okay. And this wire is going to be come on the upward direction. You can see displaced wire and the grouted material, right, is going to form a column like uh, things. It is going to provide a support. That's why the jet grouting also comes under the heading underpinning, okay? Whereby the gasketed material produced from the jetting action is replaced by the grout. Grout is going to, once grouting is also carried out and it is that this, this soil, uh, which is uh, cut by the air and the water are going to be replaced in the upward direction, okay? Three phase fluid pipe pours to the surface. By rotating the stem, a column of replaced earth is formed. Okay, a column is going to be formed here by the grouting materials. So now the next we can see pressure injected line. This is also one of the injection methods in which we are going to use the lime. This is a special form of grouting in which lime slurry containing 0.3 to 0.4 kg lime per liter of water plus surfactant is injected under high pressure which varies from 350 to 1400 kilometer net kilonewton per meter square. You can see this we are going to use the surfactant. What is surfactant? It is once you are going to mix the surfactant it will reduce the surface tension of the liquid. Right? So injections the, the line slurry injection how we do it is injection is spaced at 1 to 2 meter horizontally that means uh, at 1 to 2 meter distance then we have to go in vertical direction uh, are made at vertical intervals of 0.2 to 3.5 meter to a maximum depth of about 3 meter that means at SP, we, we have to maintain the spacing 1 to 2 meter in the horizontal directions and then Vertical at vertical intervals, which may vary from 0.2 to 0.5 meter, and ultimately it, we can go up to the maximum 3 meter depth. We can inject the uh, the lime slurry uh, for the grouting purpose. Pumping is continued at each depth until refusal or slurry runs out at the ground surface. That means refusal means now the voids of the soils are not capable to take the grout further. That is called a refusal. Usually about 120 liters of slurry is consumed per meter depth. Okay, this method is best suited for expensive soil with cracks, fissures, slickness sides, fractures, root holes, which are used as foundation for light structures. Now we can see the next injection method, electrokinetic injection. This is a new technology uh, which is, uh, in which what uh, is normally done, we can see here. In this technique, the anode and cathode electrodes are injected in the ground and form, which forms an electric field. In this process, pore water flows through fine grain soil from anode to cathode, named electrosis in the electric field. If grout materials like stabilizing chemical or suspension, that means solution grouts or the suspension grounds are injected at the anode soil. Improvement is achieved by the 
electrokinetic injection. That means the grout moves from anode to cathode. Here you can see sodium silicate is one of the primary chemical grouts used in grout injection today. Mostly it is used. Sodium silicate grout solution typically range in viscosity 3 to 10 centipoises. Sodium silicates are generally considered to be non-hazardous to health and environmentally safe. So it is good for the use in the electrokinetic injection. So what further it is done here? Dilute sodium silicate solution can be made to gel by addition of a catalyst like bicarbonate. Okay, this can be mixed with the bicarbonate. The acid generated from a catalyst reaction because catalyst we are going to use the bicarbonate along with the sodium silicate right from a catalyst uh, acid generated from a catalyst reaction with silicate water mixture causes precipitation of silica the rate of acid formation controls the setting time acid is also going to form acid is also going to generate so if a solution of sodium silicate ground injects through the anode into the soil by electrokinetic process, the generated acid at the anode may cause the grouting forming gel and strengthen the soil. Right? So there is a good role of the acid. Right? That means it seems that sodium silicate is compatible with pH variation due to EK process in the soil. So pH, because based on the pH, the soil may be alkaline or the acid. So, direct current electrical gradients of the 50 to 100 volts per meter are required. Actually, DC currents are passed to the anode to cathode. Although this method is likely to be expensive, it can be used in the special cases. Now, we can see the next uh, grouting method, injection methods, is the compaction grouting. Compaction grouting is also called a displacement method. Okay. Jet grouting is called a replacement method. It is going to replace this file. And a, a, a grout in the form of a column is going to be formed. Right? That's why it acts as an underpinning. Here, in case of compression grout, it is going to displace this file at the time of grouting. And that's why we can say here, compression grouting involves the injection of very stiff, motor-like simultaneous grout into this file. Stiff swell, thick swell, thick grout is, are going to be injected to densify or compact this swell under high pressures. When injected, the grout will not permeate through the surrounding swell. It will not uh, it will not penetrate because it already is stiff or thick. But instead of for the grout bumps that naturally displace this swell. That's why we what compaction is there. It is going to Laterally displace this well due to the formation of bulbs. By repeating the process in adjacent holes, the swell between the holes is densified through lateral displacement. When maximum compression swell surrounding each bulb is achieved, the pressure will cause a lift of the overlying swell. Right? Lifting will take place. Lifting of light structure, you can see by the compaction, lifting is going to take place. Lifting of light structure may be achieved at a depth of 1.8 to 3 meter below the foundation. Whereas in case of light structure, in case of whereas in case of heavy structure, the depth required will be 3.6 to 6 meter below the foundation. That means we can make it grouting, right, up to the, from 3.6 to 6 meter below the foundation. So it is going to lift this uh, the structure it is going to support it is going to work as underpinning right so the fifth under heading fifth injection method we have covered nine injection methods now we shall uh, this, this is the sixth and last method of grouting procedures which is called as grout injection measurements and monitoring separately this question is also asked right explains the explain the grout injection measurements and monitoring methods. So you see, uh, at the time of grouting, what we have to do? The two things are very important, measurements and monitoring. What measurements? We have to see here, during the grouting process, 
the basic information to be obtained is the weight for suspension ground. Whenever you are going to prepare the suspension ground, we have to consider the weight. When you are going to prepare the solution ground volume, we have to consider and ground flow rate along with the pressure. So four things, weight, volume, flow rate and pressure. For both, both means suspension and solution ground are required to be measured. The measurement of weight or volume should be made accurately. See, if you are not going to prepare, you are going to not measure the weight in case of suspension grout or volume in case of solution grout, proper mixing of the grout will not be prepared. So this should be taken care of. The flow rate of the grout during injection should be continuously monitored and plotted against the grout pressures. So flow rate as well as the pressure both should be monitored right to ascertain the condition below the ground different types of flow meters are also available in the market which can be used to measure the flow rate so pressure should also be monitored at the grout stations if possible continuously how much pressures we are going to use for injection of the grouting material inside the holes so grout monitoring is not just measurement of flow rate, pressure, but it is making a positive assessment of the results of the injected ground. So under heading measurements and monitoring, simply we have to not measure the flow rate and the pressures and the volume and weights, but we have to also know the results of the grouted area, whether the proper grouting has been carried out at a particular locations or not. That also we have to know under this head. This can be accomplished by the conventional methods by obtaining on disturbed soil and rock samples of grouted materials, then testing them for strength, permeability, and capacity, adopting by a standard laboratory methods. What it says here. See, wherever we are going uh, to do the grouting work, before grouting and after grouting, both the at uh, both the time for uh, we have to measure, we have to monitor the, we have to test the the, uh, the area, grouted area, right? Before grouting and after grouting, we have to know the properties of the soil, engineering or geotechnical properties of the soil. For that, we have to collect the undisturbed samples, right? So for collecting the undisturbed samples, we can make a bore holes and uh, collect the soil samples. And that soil samples can be tested for the strength, permeability and compressivity using the standard testing methods. And after grouting also, the, we can collect the samples and uh, test it. That what improvement has taken place after grouting. Before grouting, what was the status? And after grouting, what is the status? So this also comes under the measurements and monitoring. The constant about this approach is the selection of test boring location, depth of sampling and fibers. The three things are very important. So once you are going to carry out the grouts, there the things also comes in our mind where we should make a borehole, right? To collect the soil samples, right? Depth of sampling and the Finances, these three things are the constant uh, uh, under the heading measurements and monitoring. So, what it says that a better approach to use indirect methods that is also called as geophysical or non destructive methods, which will provide a continuous trace of uh, continuous trace of uh, before and after grouting, either along the ground surface or within adjacent ground. So this uh, it is not the geophysical method is very uh, good methods though it is approximate method but at least we can get idea easily that before grouting what was the status what was the properties and after grouting what is the status of the grouted location right so this is uh, all about the today topic and uh, we shall stop here and in the next topic uh, we shall cover the another uh, topics of the techniques for ground improvements. So thank you.